Yeah. Start me off the softball. I mean, <laughs> yeah. What's uh, what would you make of the opportunity here, and kind of why was this a good fit for you? Yeah, I think um, you know I've, I've been to Boise. It's been about ten years ago. Just recruiting a couple guys. Um, every person I've ever talked to about living just in in the valley has said nothing but unbelievable things about you know the just the opportunity to have a great experience here for my wife, my kids, my family, um, and then also my familiarity with Coach Avalos. Um, known him for a long time. I think our football uh, pedigree lines up pretty well. Our beliefs in, in defense lines up pretty well. And then obviously the culture and the um, the track record for Boise, you know, speaks for itself. How'd you first meet Coach Avalos? Uh, I think that, you know, he was coaching, I believe, linebackers here. Okay. I was coaching either D-line or linebackers at Oregon, and we kind of got together and talked football a few different times. Um, you know, Mark Helfrich was on our staff and had a lot of uh, similar relationships. And then we uh, spent some time on the road recruiting with each other as, as the years went through. Gotcha. Yeah. To, to leave uh, a defensive coordinator position and then, I mean, what was the, the hunt like for a job? and? You know, were you, did you want to, to get back into being a coordinator or were you just kind of looking for the best opportunity for yourself? Yeah, I think the best opportunity, um, you know, a couple of coordinator opportunities presented themselves and I didn't feel like those were a great fit for either myself or maybe just where those programs um, may have been at at the time. Um, I wanted to be around really good people. I wanted to be around a, a great program and just a chance to, you know, have a, have a little bit of a fresh start, maybe. Um, and it's gonna be really cool, you know, as your coordinator, there's a lot of great things involved in it, um, a lot of different responsibilities, but to get in the room with the defensive line again and really establish those relationships and, and be in that position again is kind of exciting for me as well. Is there anything refreshing about going from coaching like 50 guys to like eight? Yeah, like I said, I think, I think it's just about the relationship piece. You know, when you have that relationship with 50 guys, you do your best, um, but it's not, like it is when you have eight to 10 guys in your room, you know, it's just, you don't get to know them quite as much as you do. You try like crazy, but I don't think you get to know them as much as you do as when you're the position coach. So I think that's, that's an exciting piece. And it's also, you know, looking from a telescope into a microscope to some degree, you know what I mean? And now we're really detailing what we need to do and kind of getting back to some of my roots a little bit. Your group of five experience, I think you were the DC on that national championship team at UCF. Yeah. <laughs> um, what what does that provide you here, Boise State being another one of those like perennial group of five contenders? Well, I think, you know, I think first and foremost, I knew, you know, what it was going to be like coming here. You know, those, you know, there's, there's teams at the top and there's others that, you know, are still trying to make their way to the top. But you know that it's, this is the power five. You know, a, a program like this is the power five. Uh, also, I think, you know, just the coordinator experience, obviously, um, Spencer Danielson's done an unbelievable job, Andy's done an unbelievable job, but just having, you know, one more probably voice in there, maybe that bounce a few ideas off or give a few suggestions, a few adjustments, a few answers to some issues, I think is always good. Um, I always enjoyed it when I was a coordinator, having some other experienced guys in the room with me. What do you think makes a good defensive line? <laughs> uh, really big guys that can run fast and, and get to the quarterback. But, uh, <laughs> no, you know, I think it's, it's, it's got to be an unselfish group. Um, obviously, you got to have the size and the speed and all those kind of things, mm -hmm. the attributes. But I think it's an unselfish group, and it's got to be a group that works together. Um, you know, they've got to rush the passer together. They've got to play the run together. They've got to understand that sometimes the play is going to come to you, and sometimes you're going to do your job. And nobody in the stadium, nobody on television is going to tell you, like, hey, nice job. We're going to tell you that on Sunday in the meeting room. But nobody's going to know that. You just got to know that you did your job, and that allowed someone else to make a play on that on that specific down and distance. But uh, you know, unselfish group that enjoys the work probably that others don't enjoy. I think is probably the biggest thing. What do you want to get out of spring? What do you think? It's a new coach with new guys. What, what's the biggest thing for you? Yeah, I think first and foremost, it's just getting to know the guys a little better. Um, getting familiar with all the the defense, you know, that that we're going to play here. That maybe I knew. Uh, something similar or using different words or maybe it's a completely new situation and then also you know the technique piece of it just can we improve these guys technique and then ultimately getting to know those guys what can they do what can't they do how can I put them in the best position to be successful and then get out of their way when you, when you come in as a new coach do you try to identify a guy maybe in your position room that can kind of help you get to know the guys a little bit better that might be a guy that maybe kind of sets the standard for 
you know, your position group? And if you do, who, who might that guy be that's kind of stood out to you so far in those regards? Well, I think like when you're a, a new coach, position coordinator, or whatever, you need to take everyone's opi opinions in the building and use them to some degree, but then you got to find out for yourself because you never know what happens when a new voice gets in the room or somebody's got a fresh chance or, or those types of things. Um, but I think, you know, one of the other positives about coming was there's unbelievable kids on this team. Uh, these guys work, they're, they're great human beings, they have high character. And so like walking into that room, I know they lost a lot of experience, but it's a really good group of guys. And I don't know if there's one quote unquote guy that I'm going to right now, but I'm enjoying getting with all of them. You look at some of those foundational guys, Herb Gums, Amin Asin, uh, maybe Cortez Hogan. What stands out about that group of guys? Yeah, like, like I said, you know, um, and obviously Herbert, he's hurt um, mm -hmm. right now. Um, so, you know, he's he's going to be fine. He's just a little banged up. Mm -hmm. So we won't, I don't know if I'll see a ton of him. But, um, you know, just the way that those guys work, the way they ask questions, the way they take notes, the way that they, you know, get in the walkthrough and there's no Jimmy jacking around. It's like, we're here. It's on the line. We're dialed in. Let's go. So I really appreciate how those guys have come to work so far. Jabril Frazier, we just talked to him. Very impressive, you know, young man. What would be your first impressions of working with Jabril? Yeah, I think, you know, obviously I knew he was going to be moving from a, a GA position into a, into a full-time position coaching job, and you never know what you're going to get, obviously, with those either. But he's, a, he's an impressive young guy. Um, I think he, the sky's the limit for him. He's, he's going to be a great football coach. He relates to the players really well. Uh, he's really sharp technique-wise, and he's really trying to learn, you know, just the whole game and not just his one individual spot right now. So really impressed with him so far. Kind of along the same lines as Jay's question, but a lot of turnover in your position group right now. How important is it to find that that guy that is the leader? Obviously, Scott Madlock was the guy here last year. How important is it to find that guy that can lead on the field? Well, I think it's important, um, but in my experience, there's probably guys that are really good leaders in the meeting room that might not carry it over to the field. Mm -hmm. So I've got to you know work my way through spring ball and fall camp and figure out who's the whole package, who's the real deal, and I think that we'll have you know, plenty of those guys. It's just, I need to see it for myself. I, you know, I think I, I see better and I hear sometimes. So those guys got to prove it a little bit. What qualities does Andy Avalos have that made you, you know, want to come work for him? Yeah, I mean, you know, he's, he's super detail oriented, uh, very clear communicator. Uh, everything in the program that I've witnessed so far is super, super organized. Uh, and he's got his hands, you know, on the offense, defense, special teams. He kind of moves around, strength and conditioning. So I think he does a great job of encompassing the whole program. Uh, and like I said, he's just he's super detailed, super organized, and we know exactly what he wants after we meet with him, which has been impressive. What type of player were you? You played at Iowa offensive line for five years. Did you see the field much? Yeah, not very good. No, I wasn't a very good player. Um, no, I actually I played um, behind a lot of really good players. Um, I was fortunate to be on a team that was probably not real good, then was real bad, then not real good, then we got good, and then we were, you know, we were really good the last Brad year. Banks team. Yeah, yeah, yeah we, we were really good that year. I think it was the first year of the BCS, and we got to go play in one of those games. So, um, but I was I was fortunate enough to be with some really good players. Um, learned a lot. Learned that I was going to be a better football coach than a player probably early. Um, and I also got to see the evolution of what it looks like when a, a program gets kind of changed for the better. So that's that's been helpful, you know, as you go along. Another thing that's been helpful is, you know, I got to play on both offense and defense and coach on offense and defense. And that's really helped me, you know, grow as my job turned in from defensive position coach to coordinator and those types of things because I understand what's going on on offense. I understand what's going on up front. And I think I can help the guys make adjustments quicker. Can you kind of explain on that? How did you go from playing offense to, to coaching defense? Um, well, I was actually coaching. Well, you, when, you, when you're at one AA school, I was at Northern Iowa mm -hmm. FCS, um, you kind of get to coach where they need somebody because there's a lot of turnover. You know, you're losing guys and you have somebody else come in for a year maybe. Um, so my first job was coaching. I was coaching defensive line at a junior college. And then I went to Northern Iowa as the tight ends coach. I went to work at camp there. Um, they needed a guy. And Coach Farley was unbelievable. He gave me my first chance. Um, but he asked me to coach tight ends. Um, don't know if I exactly knew what I was doing. Um, but, you know, playing offensive line kind of gave me a, a good, you know, a good breakthrough mm -hmm. into that realm. And then from there, you know, I got to coach tackles and tight ends. Um, I got to coach running backs one year. I got to coach the defensive line one year. 
Um, and then Chip Kelly um, called me and asked me to come to Oregon, and the job was working with the outside linebackers at that point in time. And um, I didn't know really know if I was ready or if I wanted to go back to defense. And then when I got there and got with that group of coaches, I realized that I would rather coach defense than offense. So it just kind of stuck, and I kind of worked my way from there. If we were to you know, talk to any of your, your former guys at Oregon, UCF, Nebraska, what would you hope they, they say about you as a coach? Well, I mean, I think that, you know, aside from the football, you know, I think a lot of those guys had a lot of success in the field. So I think that they would say that I helped them um, grow as a football player, but more importantly, helped them grow as a, as a man, you know, a really good a really good brother, a really good husband, a really good father as we go down the line. So I think that the relationships I've had with those guys and just helping them grow off the field is probably more important to me than what they might say about helping them, whether they went into the first round draft pick or you know whatever happened. I think the, the off the field piece is a little more important to me. It was not long ago that uh, Boise State didn't offer multi year deals to assistants. I know you, you've had quite a few stops, maybe you know it's happened to you before, but like what, what does that mean for you as an assistant coach to um, have something guaranteed beyond the season? Yeah, I think it's you know it's a sense of security and it's a sense of um, you know a program understanding where they're at and what they want and a head coach knowing these are the guys I want to work with and work for me. Um, but it's it's a definitely a sense of security when you when you go into a deal with a multi year contract. You know. Do you remember who you recruited when you came here ten years ago? Um, I knew you were going to ask me that. <laughs> uh, yeah, I can see his face right now. So I, and I recruited him and then I left Oregon to go to UCF, a uh, safety from Rocky Mountain. Uh, yeah, yeah, Oliver, uh, yeah. Khalil Oliver. Khalil Oliver. Khalil Oliver. Yeah, he, had, he was a great young man, um, really enjoyed him and his, and his family. Um, but he ended up going there and having a really good career. Okay. Like I said, I was part of that recruitment, and then I took the defensive coordinator job at UCF, so I never really got to coach him. Yeah. So it was mainly him? Yeah, yeah. I remember coming in for a couple different, you know, a couple of days here and there and a weekend home visit or something like that. Yeah. Gotcha. What's it been like to know Spencer Danielson and what stands out about him as a coach? Uh, you know, same thing as, as, as Coach Avalos. I mean, Spencer's super detailed, uh, very clear communicator. His energy that he brings, I think, is what separates him from a lot of other people. Um, he does a great job with the guys, just getting in front of them, really bringing a lot of energy to the staff and the football players. Um, and then he's got, you know, he's got great ideas on defense and the way things should be handled and the way that the game is evolving a little bit. It's always nice with a little younger guy, they kind of see the evolution of, of the game maybe before some of the older guys get caught up. So it's really nice to have him um, be ahead of the curve a little bit.